A world more alien than the moon, more hostile than the surface of Mars. It is a realm not of light, but of immense crushing pressure. A kingdom of absolute darkness, where the very laws of biology are rewritten. This is the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth, a final frontier hidden beneath seven miles of water. What secrets lie within its silent canyons? Now, we open the field logs and begin the descent into this living abyss. Our journey begins where the sun ends. We leave the photic zone, the vibrant, sunlit world, and descend into eternal twilight. At 1,000 meters, the last photons of sunlight are finally extinguished. We have entered the midnight zone, and still we have miles to go. Down we go, through the abyssal plains, a vast cold desert lying under 4,000 meters of water. Finally, we cross the threshold into a place few have ever witnessed, the Hadal zone, the realm below 6,000 meters. Here, the weight of the world becomes literal. Over 16,000 pounds per square inch, more than a thousand times the pressure at sea level. A force that can compact steel, and a force that fundamentally alters the chemistry of life itself. For surface dwelling organisms, this pressure is instantly lethal. It destabilizes the delicate proteins and enzymes essential for cellular function. And yet, this is not a dead world. It is a world with its own rules, governed by physics that seem to defy our terrestrial understanding. The submersible's lights pierce the void, revealing a landscape not barren, but astonishingly complex. Silt-covered plains, jagged ridges, rocky outcrops rising from the darkness like forgotten mountains. This sediment, fine as powder, is the accumulated history of the ocean. Microscopic, crushed calcium carbonate shells. The remains of countless organisms that lived and died in the waters far, far above. For months, they drift downward, settling here at last, forming the foundation upon which this alien ecosystem is built. Down here, life endures not in spite of the pressure, but because of it. This is Earth's most extreme frontier, and yet it breathes. As the lights cut through the blackness, the first sign of life is movement. Scuttling across the abyssal silt are giant amphipods, crustaceans grotesquely oversized by the deep. They are the trench's relentless cleanup crew, this world's ultimate scavengers. Feeding on what little reaches these depths, drifting flakes of marine snow, and the occasional fallen giant from above. In this nutrient-starved world, they are the first and most crucial link in the food chain, recycling energy from a sunlit realm they will never see. But they are not alone. Hunting them is the sovereign of this kingdom. The Mariana snailfish, a ghostly, translucent predator shaped by the abyss itself. Its body is soft, its bones fragile, yet that very fragility is its triumph. It doesn't resist the pressure, it surrenders to it. Its cells brim with a protective compound called TMAO, trimethylamine N-oxide, a molecule that stabilizes its proteins under crushing force. Without it, life's chemistry would unravel in seconds. 
The snailfish is a living paradox, proof that survival sometimes means yielding completely to one's environment. We watch it glide, a pale phantom suspended in the current, the deepest living vertebrate ever discovered. It is not built to dominate, but to endure. A testament to life's absolute refusal to surrender, even seven miles beneath the surface. The lights sweep further, revealing strange, cathedral-like structures rising from the silt. These are xenophiophores. They look like fossilized sponges, but each is just one enormous cell, one of the largest on Earth. They build their labyrinthine shells by gluing together minerals and organic debris, a process still not fully understood. In total darkness, without nerves or organs, they construct order from chaos. They are the silent architects of the abyss, challenging everything we thought a single cell could be. But this deep world is not sustained by scavenging alone. It has its own source of creation. Along tectonic fractures, the sea floor bleeds chemical-rich fluids, superheated, metallic, and alive with potential. Here, sunlight is irrelevant. In its place, chemistry becomes the engine of existence. Chemosynthetic bacteria feed on hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide, and methane, turning poison into life. They are the primary producers of this hidden world, the microbial architects of a self-contained biosphere. Around them thrive strange clams and mussels, their tissues dense with symbiotic bacteria that generate energy from stone and gas. Tube worms stand like red-tipped sentinels, their bodies nourished entirely by the microbes within. This is a completely alien food web, one that does not depend on the sun, but on the planet's inner fire. Down here, life does not just endure the darkness, it thrives in it, it transforms it, it builds an empire from the impossible. For millennia, we saw the deep ocean trenches as little more than scars, cold, lifeless wounds in the crust of the earth. But our descent reveals a profound truth. The Mariana is not a void. It is a living system, an engine hidden beneath the waves. Every flake of marine snow that drifts from the surface, the remains of plankton, fecal pellets, microscopic shells, carries the planet's breath. Down here, what is not consumed becomes buried within the hotel sediment, sealed away for geological ages. This is the biological carbon pump, one of Earth's most vital invisible mechanisms. It locks carbon deep beneath the seafloor, keeping it from returning to the atmosphere, helping to steady the climate of the entire planet. The trench is not just a graveyard, it is a guardian, a silent custodian of balance, performing a service we are only beginning to comprehend. But even this isolation is no longer absolute. In the deepest sediments ever recovered, scientists have found the unmistakable fingerprint of humanity. Threads of plastic, synthetic polymers, woven into the mud seven miles below. Inside the bodies of the giant amphipods, the cornerstone of this Hadal food chain, we find fragments of our own waste. Even our smallest mistakes have fallen to the deepest place on Earth. The sun's light cannot reach here, but our pollution can. And a new shadow grows on the horizon, deep sea mining. The demand for rare metals, nickel, cobalt, manganese, drives machines ever closer to the abyssal plains. These plains are not barren. They are ancient, fragile worlds where life grows in geological time. 
one sweep of a mining arm could erase ecosystems that have taken millennia to form. Species never seen, never named, gone before they are even known to exist. The Mariana Trench is a realm of profound paradoxes, a world of crushing force that nurtures the most delicate life, a place of eternal darkness that illuminates the very principles of survival. It reminds us that our planet is one connected system. The health of the deepest abyss is tied to the choices we make beneath the sun. It reminds us that our planet is one connected system. The health of the deepest abyss is tied to the choices we make beneath the sun. To journey here is to read the great codex of life, its chapters written in pressure and silence. Each organism, each adaptation, a sentence carved in darkness, telling the story of endurance. Perhaps the trench does not hide life's secrets. It preserves them, waiting for us to prove we deserve to read them. We must decide. Will we listen to this final whisper from the deep or tear its pages out before they are ever fully understood?